Hey, what's up? Today we're gonna to be creating a rocket launcher. So let's hop into Blender. We'll delete the default cube and go hunting for some awesome artwork to pledge it. I mean, use as a reference image. Yeah, this'll do nicely. Back in Blender, we'll add a new, much better, not default cube. We'll bring in our reference image and start blocking away. And after a month of heavy procrastination, this is what we've ended up with. I found it much easier to model each part separately and then overlay them all. I added some materials and I thought this color scheme looked pretty cool. Over in Unity, we'll start by adding a ground plane, scaling it up, and applying a cool looking material to it. We'll need an FPS character controller, so using some tutorial section, we'll follow this cool guide I found online. So thanks to the Sharp Coder blog, I'll link it down below. But in summary, we'll add an empty player object, pop a capsule in there, resize and reposition, move the camera into the player object, reposition, add a character controller, add a player controller script, and copy paste the Sharp code. After adding the code, we'll need to drag the camera game object into the player controller. We'll add some cubes for reference and test it out. All right, cool, looks pretty good. From Blender, we'll export the model in two parts as FBX. First the body, then the missile. After copying the models into Unity, we're gonna wanna extract the materials so that we can apply any shader specifics like metallics and roughness, because Blender and Unity shaders don't play well together. We can then go ahead and drag our models into the hierarchy and start the extremely scientific process that is positioning the models correctly. We'll child them to the main camera so that they can rotate with wherever the player is looking. A pretty useful trick when getting to the finer details of the positioning is to drag the game window into a side-by-side -side position with the scene view so that we can see what the player sees as well. And after fiddling for a bit, this is what we have. I think it looks pretty cool and we're ready to start with the fun stuff. It's code. We're gonna use this missile in the scene as a kind of placeholder. And if the player is able to shoot, we're going to create a new instance of the missile at the location and rotation of the placeholder. We'll then fire an event which is declared in the player controller to let any subscribed missiles, i.e. the one we just instantiated, know that the player has fired and it can apply some force to itself. And this way we separate any missile specific logic from the player. Like, I don't know, PID control or something. Well, let's test this out and see what it looks like. So it shoots which is good, but right now it's shooting the placeholder and the newly created missile. So whilst I love procedurally generating things, we're going to rely on the animator here to help us with a few states. First, we'll need a state for when the launcher is loaded. We'll call it rest loaded, and its responsibility is to let the player know that they can shoot. The next state is rest unloaded, and in this state, we'll just need to deactivate the missile placeholder. The final state will be the reloading state, which will activate when the player presses the reload button and upon completion of the animation will return to the initial state, rest loaded. The reload state requires the most amount of effort. At the start of the animation, we'll want to make sure the placeholder missile is inactive and that the launcher is in its rest position. At around the 0.25 second mark, we'll activate the placeholder and move it and the launcher into a reload ready position. We'll hold that position for a little before sliding the missile in and lowering the launcher to its rest position. We'll set up some trigger variables which we will use to uh, trigger the states. One to move from rest loaded to rest unloaded. We'll set this in the player controller when the player clicks the fire button. And one to move from rest unloaded to reload. We'll also set this in the player controller just when the player presses the reload button. So putting it all together, let's test it out. That looks pretty cool. I think the last thing we'll do for this episode is to add a reticle. We can do that by adding a canvas with an image inside it. We'll use the default knob image and center it in the middle of the screen. And that's a reticle done. I'll leave it at that for this video, mostly because I've been faffing around for about two months without having released any content. The next one will be about targeting systems and explosions and stuff. I'll probably release it in a year's time. As usual, the code's linked below. Do the likey likey and the sabi sabi. Okay, love you, bye.